Thank you. And welcome to tonight's uh, set plan meeting. It's great to see you all here. I uh, hope you've all, uh, students, have had a great break and you know, had a chance to start having discussions with your parents about your future plans because that's what tonight's all about. The, um, uh, so everyone has their folder with them. So everyone's got their folder. So must put thing. Very good. Okay. So set plans. It's a senior education and training uh, plan. A set plan is a confidential document that we develop um, that students can use towards working out their pathways. The um, I'll go through all the forms and cetera in a minute that that involves, but we'll just go over the overview for the moment. There are a lot of different ways that you can do your learning goals and your set plan. There's lots of different courses and we'll open up some of those tonight. But there's certainly so much out there that you can choose or go in that direction. As I was talking to a parent tonight, one of the things is it doesn't matter what choices you make now, um, the most, in terms of what career path you want to go, the most important thing, and I'll probably say this about ten times tonight, is to choose subjects that you are interested in. That's the most important part. Because you may change your mind a number of times between now and the uh, end of year 10, but where our year 12s are now just getting to the business end where they actually start filling out the forms where they choose their courses. And they still can change up till November and put their final selection in. So the most important things, as I will go through tonight, if you're looking at the OP path, is obviously Maths English and then choose four subjects of high interest. Then also you have alternate pathways that we'll look at as well. So there's um, apprenticeships, traineeships, fed in schools, TAFE, so there's a number of other courses that you can do. All those courses then give you credit towards your QCE, which is your Queensland uh, Certificate of Education. There's also things like Head Start at USQ, where you can go and do a pre-subject in university, and that will then give you credit to, not only to a degree, but also will guarantee you entry into a general studies course at USQ. So there's so many different options. Uh, tonight, we're really focusing, I guess, more on the process of the steps we need to go through to get the plans in. But obviously, the most important part is really having those conversations uh, with your parents or parents with your students, just talking about all the different options. Trying to get it to as many career days that you can. But even though you may make the decision for next 11 and 12, realistically you've still got until the end of year 12 to make your final decision. And even then, if you've cho chosen an alternate pathway in year 12 and you suddenly decide you want to go to university, there are still a number of pathways that you can actually do uh, post year 12. USQ have a pathways program. There's also, if you've done um, traineeships, you're getting credit towards um, university or to diploma courses. So there are so many ways that you can actually end up still getting a career, but the most important thing, if I can stress tonight, is to keep your mind open to as much as possible. So don't feel that we're going through the set plans tonight or the next three months that it's locking you in to something specific. You can change your mind and all you need to do is, is think about that flexibility. I have two sons. One is 28 now and the other is 26. So my 28 year old always wanted to do architecture so that was easy. We chose the subjects, he chose subjects he liked and whenever we uh, needed to push him a little bit we just remind him of what he wanted to do and um, he got into it, but he still has the same habits of leaving everything to the last minute um, and still does that in his working life, so I don't think that things change. So my youngest is, uh, didn't know what he wanted to do, like some of you in this room I'm sure, so we did all the right things, we sent him off to all the career guides, got him tested for everything and all they could come back was you could do anything he wanted, which is really useful, so we didn't really ever get a final path. So I guess my point is, Please, don't get too stressed about where you are now. The most important thing is to be reasonably flexible in your subject selection so that in year 12 is when you get to that 
time where you really start nailing down if you wanted to do a university course. Just grab, guys, just grab your folders, please. Um, so, getting back to SEPA, I've got right off task then. Um, so, we've got a number of different pathways that you can look at um, doing in Year 12, and that's the purpose of the SET plan. So, you structure uh, learning around or about your abilities, interests, and ambitions. And I'm going to look at some of the things we've done in Year 10 as a group in our home classes, which will help with that process. So in the set plan, students will be able to list a variety of different learning pathways, some of which may be accessed outside the current formal structure of school. This provides more options and flexibility in learning. Okay, so what the students have been working with the home class teachers, with um, uh, various uh, visitors, we've had lots of um, visitors who come to speak to our students from universities, TAFE, from um, work placement through to um, uh, apprenticeships and traineeships. So we've tried to give a variety of visas and that will continue obviously. So we've tried to give that um, lots of different ideas that students can choose from. So we've done a work experience and uh, from I think all the students that I saw on work experience was a very positive experience and went really well. We've got the careers website, so hopefully everyone is using that and looking at that and I'll go through a few things that you can use on the careers website. We have from the website there is careers newsletter which they send out but also the college we send out our own newsletter and in that we put any traineeship, any apprenticeship that comes through us there is all the open days, career days, etc. So it's really important that you look at those, both those newsletters as they come through. Lots of valuable information. You've looked at your um, interests, strengths and abilities and looked at work values. So there's some of the things I'll show your parents in a minute that you've probably have forgotten over the holidays, but I'll get a chance to see them now. My career match is actually uh, a... a um, <coughs> I guess it's like a career assessment. Um, all Year 10 students should have done it and should have, would have received it in the email, and so hopefully they've shared that with you. If you haven't seen it, I've got an example so that you can make sure you find it. So that it's very worthwhile. It's worthwhile having a look at. Okay. So what's involved in developing a set plan? On your folders that all students have, on the front of the folder there is a sticker. On that sticker is a number, your Louis number. Now, I say this every year, there is a card inside, you, I get you to write your Louis number, well, I won't do it now, but we'll do it uh, before we go, and say, put it somewhere safe. Every year at year 12, as some of your parents who year 12 students passed, know that you contact us because we can't find the number. So it's uh, the Louis number, we keep track of it as well, but it's important because you can access the QTAC site, QCAA site, and you can get a lot of valuable information. Uh, TAS and the career, uh, Concordia Career website I've mentioned, I've mentioned Complete Match, which you all should have done. So it's important, I guess, now to make sure you research any career choices, start going to open days. Look for courses, and we'll go through some of the documents I've sent out. Unfortunately, I wanted to get this out um, to everyone before this document here, before the holidays, but they didn't arrive until the first week of the holidays. So that's unfortunate because it would have made it a little even more useful for you to have seen that. Hopefully, you've had a chance to link to the website. I've sent it, which had a PDF version, but now you've got the hard copy, which we'll have a little look at in a minute. Alternate pathways, I'll go through a few of those. Uh, but the main thing is to have that discussion with parents and students, uh, have your obviously students with parents, but parents with your students, and talk about ideas. Then we have an interview, uh, week three and four this term, with the nominated teacher, and I'll go through that process in a minute. Okay, the careers website, I've just put this up quickly just to... Um, Hopefully everyone's had a chance to see this, but there's a section there for parents, so it's well worth having a look at that. The students have um, 
obviously been working through the activities, but one of the most important things is the message board and the careers newsletter. I'll just show you that. I've mentioned the careers newsletter. But on their website, there is the messages. For example, it's got the, this is from last year, but it looks at the USQ Head Start program. So anything that we get, we'll put out as a message. There's also a number of areas on the right, which are events coming up, so then you open days, defence forces, all those sort of things. And on the left, if you have wished to subscribe to their newsletter, uh, that's where you do that. So I'd encourage you uh, to all do that. So the lessons they've looked at on the careers website are essentially these um, on the left hand side, but I'm just going to go through quickly. So interests, they would have sat down and talked, looked at their interests and gone through some activities. Skills and abilities, work values. So hopefully they've ended up something like this. So when we look at our set plan, part of it is actually taking what you've learnt or got achieved here. So you've got some idea of what your interest area is. Strengths and abilities. So they've got a whole heap of um, activities they've done working on that. So it's important that you look at those when you start thinking about your career choices because the most important thing is to look at something that you're really interested in or that you have a strength in. And so we've got some more activities. Work values, it looks at why you, what things you see important in the field of work when you go out to work. So they've done that particular activity. Essentially then you'll come up with something that I have did for myself, just some things that you're very good at and good at, and it's got some other sections too. But it's got some ideas when you come to do your set plan, you can go back and look at this. So just a reminder for the students. Career planner, uh, it's straightforward, just click get started and all, and you can work through that. And essentially, you will then come up with a plan. So I've just done this one, a dummy one for myself, but you end up with um, occupation and goes through things of what you need to be able to do that occupation, what courses you would need to do. But you can do three different plans there, so that also helps. And certainly once you've completed your set plan and over the next couple of years, students, you can come back to this because as you just start changing or thinking about different career choices, you can come back and do this plan. Okay. I'll hold questions to the end, but I'll just sort of give you an overview of what set plan is and hopefully what preparation the students have gone through. Now I'm going to invite Ms Robinson to speak because this is the, probably the more technical part for if you're looking for an OP um, uh, um, course or idea, this really takes you through all those things. And the most important thing is also QCE, is looking at how you can take any sort of course that you've done and map that into your, get credit for your certificate of education. So I'm going to hand over to Ms Robinson now. I think technical means slightly boring, but um, the details are in the booklet here, this um, main booklet. So I'm just going to summarise some of the points here so you've got an idea of, ex of just how to choose subjects that get you where you want to go. Um, the first thing that's also in your booklet is the QCE, the Queensland Certificate of Education. And that's a very specific requirement in terms of points and how you get those 20 points. So you really do need to get 20 credits and they must be obviously at a sound level of achievement. You don't get any points for a subject you fail in general. And the core are your main subjects at school. So you need a core both for this and for an OP. You must do three subjects for four semesters and that's the core. So as you chop and change subjects, you need to be aware that three of your subjects you need to carry all the way through 11 and 12, and that's normally for most students in English and Maths and one other subject. So always at the back of your mind, make sure you're keeping that, and when you're changing subjects, obviously, you come in and we have a conversation, and then you also get a form at home that enables you to do a double check to make sure you're satisfied if there is a subject change. 
So you can get 12 credits from core, that's the three subjects over four semesters, and the other eight to make the 20 can come from a combination of subjects. So there's six from prep courses, and I'll put the slide up in a minute that shows you what they might be, and you've got to meet literacy and numeracy requirements. Now literacy and numeracy requirements are fairly easy to achieve um, through obviously the study of English or a maths or a pre-voc maths. And this is the whole page which is you can access on the QCAA website. But you can see here these are the core subjects. That's all core. So there's 12 out of there, then the prep, you can take six. Enrichment are eight. So there's recognised certificates and awards, and you need to go to the website to check what they might be. And then learning projects, and then advanced courses. Some of our students do music extension, some students do diplomas. But it's a matter of tallying all the points up um, to make sure you've got the 20. But it's not difficult to get 20. If you take out your 12, you've only got eight other points to get. Um, you can see here that the certs three, two, three or four give you varying amount of points as well. But you're restricted in the amount of points you can count at each of those levels. But most students get a QCE, merely by the fact that they've covered enough courses in here to add up to the magic <coughs> 20. Literacy and numeracy is important and that's where you must have a sound for one semester of English or English communication. Failing that, if you haven't got that, then you can do a short course in literacy for a semester and that will get you your literacy requirement. Numeracy is the same, any maths, a sound in a semester or again a short course in numeracy or you can get a C or above on the QCS test. So most students satisfy the literacy and numeracy requirement. We do a stock take at the end of semester three and if there's a student that doesn't have a sound or a notional sound, we can see the sound for literacy, then obviously this um, short course has to come in so that you can get that tick on your QCE. This isn't going So at least a sound level achievement in one semester of one of the subjects, or you can exit with a VLA or a limited in English, but you've achieved a notional sound in a single semester. So you may get a VLA or a limited at the end of grade 12, but because you passed grade 11 semester one, you've got your notional sound. And the same, obviously, with numeracy. Now you can track your progress all the way through, because basically you're required to go into the Student Connect, and that's the um, website there. And you keep banking things, and obviously um, our system's also move into this area as well. But if you're doing something like um, music, then your provider needs to have your Louis, they need to have this website, and they bank your credits, we don't. So you need to be aware that that's what you need to do. And then, of course, it comes into your account and it's all checked through. So your music teacher, um, Duke of Edinburgh, any of those different awards and certificates are banked by your provider, not by us, into your account. This is also the account where your um, OPs will be delivered at the end of grade 12. So the sooner you go onto that website, feed your Louis in. Normally, the password is the day and month of your birth. So you go in, put that in, then you invent your own password and you keep that open all the way through. <coughs> to move on to OPs, and um, this is obviously something you know quite a bit about. This is a statewide rank order, so compared with all other students in the state. <coughs> and you're the last people probably going through this system. It's based on achievement in authority subjects. Authority subjects are those core subjects we've talked about, the subjects that are OP subjects. Take into account that different students take different subjects, attend different schools, 
and as you probably know, OP1 is the highest and a 25 is the lowest. And at the moment it's part of the tertiary selection process. So you might find when you go onto QTAC website or other websites, it'll suggest what OP you need to get into that particular faculty. And of course none of those are steadfast because it depends very much on the number of applicants. So you might be an OP3 and it says an OP3, but there might be 80 kids ahead of you who've got OP1s and 2s. So you really do need to think all the way through that you need to, as Mr Sharman said, keep your options open so that you can actually um, get where you want to go. So to get an OP, this is what you need. 20 semester units in authority subjects. Okay, so that's English, maths, physics, chemistry, all those subjects. And there's the important thing, three subjects for four semesters. That's your core. And so five subjects, four semesters gives you 20 units. You then have to sit the core skills test for which you'll get training at school and you must, of course, complete year 12. The only thing you get points for are you must pass a semester and you must complete the semester. You get no points for a semester you don't complete. So you must complete the semester and you must get a sound or above to get the point. So if you have a look at this one here, this student obviously, there's all the core subjects there. And remember it's your five highest subjects that are counted. So basically that student has gone all the way through and got four credits at the end of year 12 and they've got 22 points. So they're OP eligible and QC eligible. And there's all the requirements of literacy and numeracy. They've got a sound of B or in English, sound of better in maths, B and maths, C. They've got completed core. They've got 22 credits. They get a QCE and they'll get an OP if they complete the QCS. So this student here obviously has a few problems. They haven't got any points. Well, they've got zero credits for some subjects because they've got limiteds. But they've got a sound or better in English. They've got a sound or better in maths eventually because they've picked up maths A. They've got their core. They've got 18 credits out of 20. And they might get some conceded credits from a limited maths B and chemistry. So they'll still get their 20 points, but they won't get an OP because they only have 15, not 20 points. Okay. Now it's interesting when you come to select subjects, I do a lot of the subject changes and a lot of students come in and talk about the subjects they're going to take and how they took a subject because they thought it was going to be interesting or because they thought someone else was going to take it. And I think basically it's a mistake that you make that you really do need to choose subjects you've been successful in. There is, you obviously don't have a choice of English and a maths, but your other subjects you need to have had some success. You need to enjoy them because you're going to study those subjects for two years. So if you want to do the, the deadly five, physics, maths, B, maths, C, etc., then clearly they're subjects you want to enjoy, not because you think they'll give you a higher OP, because they won't. So you're selecting on your set plan six subjects for two years. You obviously must choose a maths. And be aware that in the QTAC books and elsewhere you'll find the maths requirements outlined. And maths B, I think, has just changed to be for teaching, hasn't it? Sorry. I think there's been changes with maths B in the requirement. So you need to check which maths you need. You need maths B for teaching. So you need to really check that through um, in your QTAC book it'll have all the prerequisites listed for you. And they do change, okay, so you need to be aware of that one. And then look at your prereqs for university courses because basically they'll be listed as well. Often they'll say A science, it could be physics, chemistry, um, that they list there, biology, but you need to look carefully at that and think which of those would I enjoy the most which one would give me likely success, okay? Suggestions, or not suggestions, requirements. If you're studying Math C, you must study Math B. And if you're studying Physics, it's strongly encouraged that you do Math B as well. Those subjects go together. The other thing to look at, it's also spelled out in your book on pages two and three. These are field positions. And field positions are the subject weightings, the only subject weightings. And 
basically some of the courses require certain field positions. So there are additional rank orders. It used to be, and I think it still is the general case, that if they've got more students than are required for a faculty, they'll go back to field positions. So they differentiate between students with the same OP. Now, you can see how students fit into this one. If I'm going to do Maths C, um, Maths B, Physics, Chemistry, Biology, I'm not going to have Field E, and I won't need Field E. I'm not going to be a ballet dancer or a creative arts person. So I'd probably have Field C and Field D would be my strongest fields. If I'm a Humanities student, then I'd probably have Field A, Field B. <coughs> I might have some Field C if I do Maths B. And if I do drama and art, I might have some practical work in there. But they're only used quite often, um, used when there's a need to differentiate between eight students applying for one position, which student best fits um, that faculty. And that's on um, page three of your booklet. Alternate pathways. Okay, I mentioned my career match earlier that all the students have done and they were emailed something that looks like this. And so this is a dummy one done by the uh, coordinators. But in it is a lot of information that starts off about general careers, well worth reading through, and then it then looks at personality types. So in this case it's an, uh, the dominant styles analyzer and the, and the backup styles driver. It explains all those things but to me, because it's, I find it quite useful in terms of being pictor pictorial or graphic, is that you can read all those things, but you get down to here, this um, gives you what you're good at, etc. But if I just scroll right down, I usually go and look at this here. This graph gives you a good idea of, um, yeah, sort of where you fit in this cycle. Now, all this is giving you a guide. Don't take it as being gospel. It's not, yes, you're suddenly going to be only in education and that's it. But what it does is give you an idea of your work style, your thinking styles, and what positions you may be interested in. The second most useful part I find from this is then gives you some ideas of different subjects and courses that you might do. And if you scroll down a bit further, all these are possible. Yes, you can still choose outside of this list, but possible courses you may be interested in from your um, career um, process that you went through and mapping out in my career match. So hopefully everyone's got that. Now, parents, you've got to make sure your children have given this to you. But it's um, it's read through it all. I've just jumped to the highlights to give you some of the ideas of where things are. But there's a lot of useful information there, and it helps students for you to think about paths. Uh, all these links here, you can click on these links. They take you to my futures job site and gives you a whole heap of information about that particular job. So in this case, this person here could click on any of these, and will get some lot of information. I won't worry about clicking on it but it just gives you an idea of how powerful a tool that is. Okay. Alternate pathways. School-based apprenticeships and traineeships okay, allow, you can do from years 10, 11 and 12. So we have some students in year 10 who are currently doing these. Uh, some are doing in business. Uh, some are doing their apprenticeship. They've got, uh, um, so there are lots of opportunities in that. So essentially it's um, continuing to do say five subjects at school and doing your traineeship or apprenticeship one day a week. So there's lots of options there. Now for those parents who may have a business might be interested in uh, having a traineeship or a, or a um, apprenticeship, it essentially involves a partnership with the student, parents, employer and school, I've left off here, and an SRTO, which is a registered training organisation. But the most important part I've put in bold there is an Australian Apprenticeship Support Network, an AASN. So what that is, is a company such as Busywork, uh, MEGT, 
dance group training, those type of businesses, what their role is, they're employed by the actual government to control and oversee these traineeships and apprenticeships. So it is a little complex, but if you're an employer and are looking at traineeship or a, um, apprenticeship, I would suggest you contact a particularly busy at work at MEGT because they can give you some ideas. Other places to contact are Aurora International. The other side of the coin is students who are interested in a traineeship. We will put them in our newsletter. We have a number every time the newsletter goes out. There are a lot in hospitality. There are quite a number in business. Um, but they don't seem to be as popular amongst our student body. Um, most of our students, we've got a couple of students doing business and a couple doing hospitality, but uh, a lot of our other uh, traineeships are either an apprenticeship in terms of a trade or we've got a number doing, um, uh, oh, sorry I've forgotten there, um, I'm just trying to think, anyway, it'll come to me uh, by the end of the day, it's been a long day, uh, but, but my point is, is that process, it not only involves um, uh, going to these people, but students, you should get out there, if you know someone who's an employer, take your CV, go and see if they're interested in taking you on as an apprenticeship or traineeship, particularly if you're interested in doing a trade. Okay, so it's really important that it's everyone is looking at doing these things. Okay, so it's uh, 50 days of paid employment, so if you're going to do, offer it or you're going to do it, you actually get paid to do it, which is a real advantage, and they look after then the trainee organisation coming in and looking after you. The electro technology is 88 days of paid employment. The spectrum the employer will provide a minimum of 7.5 hours per week, averaged over a three month period. There are a lot of incentives out there for employers as well to take on traineeships and apprenticeships, particularly in specific industries, so it's well worth um, hunting around. Childcare and beauty seem to be some of the areas that we've had a few students being able to pick up traineeships and, and um, have gone quite well in it. So I encourage you to look around at those. This is a really good site, apprenticeshipsinfo.qld.gov. Very easy to find, you still search for apprenticeships in Queensland, and it's well worth looking through that and going through those, that information. Second component is TAFE courses. What I've done is essentially just taken all the TAFE courses that there's offered semester two, just to give you an idea of what TAFE Southwest offer. Okay, so. Um, they're all there and you can click on the website. So there's Cert 2, Cert 3s, uh, childcare, we've got uh, some students doing the nursing, Diploma of Nursing, and are currently enrolled in that. We have some students um, doing hospitality. Uh, we have a number of students doing horticulture, uh, and they're doing their traineeship or school-based traineeship apprenticeship through um, uh, their parents on the farm. So there's lots of ways of doing it. So. Uh, that's uh, for some of the, some of you may have access to agriculture, you might be interested in doing that. So there's uh, the TAFE courses. So other courses, uh, most of you are aware the Downs Group Training, we offer the Cert 1 in uh, construction and the students just go across the road to G DGT. Um, Aurora, I do need to plug, they've, uh, it's been in the newsletter, they have a Cert 2 in telecommunications, Cert 2 in tourism. Uh, and cert, and which they've been pushing and offering here. We're going to have the Cert 2 in telecommunications will be offered here and they'll start next week. So some students I know in this room may have put their names down, but it's, there's still spaces available if anyone's interested in that. That particular course, while I'm doing a bit of a plug for it, is for anyone interested in computing, it's essentially non-electrical work. So it's setting up networks, setting up computers for networks, that type of thing. So if anyone's interested in that, Make sure you see me, me or Miss Watson, please. Um, TAA uh, is working with our technology departments, so if you choose, for example, technology studies, you can then do a Cert 2 in engineering pathways or a Cert 1 and 2 in furniture making. So we've got that partnership in place. So if you're into the practical side of things, you can also do some certificates. And obviously that just banks towards your QCE as well. So what I've tried to do is just give you a whole heap of different ideas of what's there. Obviously, the uh, best person to talk to for 
vet or tra uh, careers type, well that type of things myself or Miss Watson and anything that's directly related to OPs or subject uh, see Miss Robinson. Okay, so that sort of gives you the idea there. Right, let's get down to business. So, I'll just if you open your package up, first thing, yes, yes, yeah. what's that? Very good idea. The lights just up the back there. Thanks for that. Right. Thanks, Arnold. So, this card is very important because this is what we get you to put your Louis number in. It also talks about your password. As mentioned, it is uh, your birth, to do with your birth date. Okay? So, this then has the website to get into to get all that information we've been talking about in terms of the QCAA. Okay? So that's a very important card. I'd encourage you all to write your Louis number and your password, which is uh, day, day, month, month, DDMM, I think. It's written there somewhere. Yes. So just put that as your password and log in there when you get a chance to have a look at what's there. Okay, the next one to look at is this orange form. I call it orange, apparently it's peach. Okay, I've got it up there on the screen. So the, <coughs> what I would like you to do is with your parents is work through this set plan. The first page, as you can see, is fairly straightforward. It's name and address, Louis number, etc. etc. Then part A is just choosing what options you're going to be doing next year. It's important even if you're not going to be at Concordia, which will be sad, I know, but it's important that you put that down as well so that we know what's that's in there. Okay? Um, the so you've got choices of continued studies, studies and work, part-time casual job, continue at school until I get a job. You know, some students wish to leave, but as long as they've got a full-time job, they can leave school, etc. And obviously the one I've been talking about quite a bit is alternate pathways, which is that bottom one. Section B is just choosing simply that you're going to um, go for a Queensland Certificate of Education, or if you're only doing a few subjects, you might do just a Queensland certificate of individual achievement. So that's one for each subject. Most of us in this room, I would believe, would be doing the QCE. OP, that will depend if you're interested in taking the university pathway. Uh, and then obviously VET, and you can choose, just fill those in. Okay. So you might be interested in the USQ Head Start. I've mentioned that earlier. That's just simply available on the USQ website, and they have a, quite a number of subjects you can do there or a full-time employment. <coughs> work experience is filling out just your work experience that you've done or other work that you may be. You may be doing part-time work. Uh, so just put all that information in there because it's also useful to think about the skills you've developed and that's what this work skills, which I've just highlighted there. Um, for example, it's um, when I keep saying when I take uh, people for set plans is that you're getting used to working with adults and different people. Because that's an important part of work experience, is an understanding that what's involved in work. It's not just uh, following uh, orders or directions, but there's lots of skills you pick up, social skills, as well as obviously the skills that you've learnt at the, um, at the workplace. This one here, you should be able to get most of those from the, the activities that I've shown you. So you're just going to see, put strong, dislike, um, Essentially, whether you're strongly like, practical, mechanical, technical, um, so you put SL. If you strongly dislike nature, living things outdoors, you put circle SD, and that's basically what that part is there. So my career interest areas are those ones that I showed earlier, and they're also, you can take from my career match 
So it's the interest areas. It's just looking at whether you're interested in outdoors or um, practical or um, caring, that type of thing. So there's lots of different choices. There's no set answers for that. But just put down um, what career aspects you're after. Your personal strengths. You would have done a lot of that, I know, year 10. So personal strengths, personal weaknesses. So just for those out, so uh, it might be maths, English, that you really like in subjects. Um, and vocational, so you dislike. So it's important that you go through that. So when you go to meet your teacher, that you can just have a quick discussion about what you really like and what you're strong in. This path here, you just tick on the right, which is your preferred pathway, and what your long-term career goals are. Most often, when I meet Year Tens, the biggest problem is you sort of haven't really thought of that. It's still up in the air, and it's but that's all right. Just put down some idea of what things you might like to do. There's no real clear answer at that point. Okay, the next page is looking at courses that you might be interested in. And that's where this book here, your QTAC book, is really important. So if I just get you to open to say page, it's all open to page 36. So Hotel Management, National Tourism, Hotel Management Bachelor is at the top there for the Griffith College. It tells the location of you know, which campuses it's on, so there may obviously things might be Nathan with Griffith, there's a lot of different campuses that can be. But the uh, course duration, so 3F means three years full time, or six years part time, 6P. But the most important thing is the requirements, and that's what we've been talking about before tonight. In most courses you find it will have English for SA, which means for satisfactory achievements in English. Most courses are like that. However, if you go down to, say, Health Sciences, which is under Health and Recreation, you can see there <coughs> you need to do a Science as well, uh, or Maths B. So, each of them have a number of different options as you go through. Um, for example, Bachelor of Science on the page 37 there has maths A or B. So that's what you're doing, that's the prerequisite. So in this case here, if I want to do Bachelor of Primary, which is not a good example, oh, it has got maths A, B or C there. So that's a sample and that's what you do. You simply copy in course that you're interested in, what page it is on the um, booklet and what um, institution it is. Can I recommend, the, they've actually updated this book and have done a great job because they've got Connect with QTAC. They did this last year, particularly with the year 12s, but there's lots of different ways you can connect with the QTAC site. There's all those things. Also, there's an app which you can download from Apple Store or Google Play. The th reason I'm pointing that out is it's really important because most of you are very uh, social media savvy, so it'll be worthwhile getting on to those sites and start looking at those things. So that's on the first page. The next page is a couple of activity sheets, and I can recommend those for all the students to look at because you go through your favourite subjects, etc and gives you lots of information. But you can use that towards completing your set plan. It again also explains OP and uh, field position as well, so there's lots of information there. Um, so I'll leave that with you there. So subject selection, I'll come to the sheet in a moment, uh, which has a list of subjects to look at, and I'll go through those in a minute. But essentially, we need to obviously choose an English, choose a maths, and then we have four cho choices, so we have six subjects. And I'll pull that up in a minute, I'll just finish this off. Then when you meet with your teacher, we'll go through each of these. 
will check that you're going to meet the literacy requirement, which if you're doing English, you will. Numeracy, if you're doing a maths, you will. QCE, uh, if you're doing uh, five subjects, you will. OP eligible, etc. Field position, okay. We'll start in class, and if I can just refer to this page up here. Okay. Page four. In home class, um, you will, as you start working through this, you'll have a go at doing field positions. It is only a stress if you're aiming for a popular subject. It is geared towards people who perhaps are doing science, medicine, that type of thing, because they may have only going to take OP1s as going to be the top group in OP1s, then they'll look at those field positions. They'll also look at that in other popular subjects. Okay, so if they've got down to OP16 and they need to pick the top couple out of that group, they will use the field positions. So we'll work through that in home class um, once you've got some ideas on what subjects you want to do. So that's what that page there is for. It's just to help you with your field position. And as Miss Robinson mentioned, there's five A, B, C, D, E, and we'll work through that and finalise that in our set plans. Um, it's important um, that uh, we go, we'll go through all those field positions and work through that together. Uh, if you're interested in school-based apprenticeship or traineeship in, just make sure you write that down because then Miss Watson and I will record that so we keep an eye out. So when we get traineeships or apprenticeships or business ring us up, which we quite regularly do, we can then just go straight to our um, uh, database where we put this on so we can let you know. Also the courses in TAFE, there is a booklet and this information from TAFE. As I said, I just showed the semester two TAFE courses, but this is the full TAFE courses in here on offer. So it's important if you're considering TAFE courses to check through these. What you'll find with TAFE is they will have asked for expression of interests. Um, it's important that if you're interested in any TAFE courses and we put that out to you as a group, make sure you put in any interest that your uh, courses that you're interested in. What happens is TAFE will put out an expression of interest to schools. If they don't get the numbers, they cancel the course. And then I might have half a dozen students here who didn't let us know, but they miss out because they cancel it. So it's really important if you're considering any of the TAFE courses, have a good look at that information. You let us know if they ask you. Uh, then we uh, complete that off. So year of entry is 2017, year of exit is 2018. Some students may be interested in extending over three years your um, year 11 and 12 courses and that's fine. If uh, students have particular sports or, or whatever it may be, activities that they would like to do outside of school and they want to extend their schooling, there's no problems with doing that. Just need to work that through. Okay, then there's the whole agreement and we sign it off. Um, essentially, at the meeting, we'll go through all this information, double check it all. If you've got any questions, um, then we can do it there. But if you have any questions, once you start looking at this, please feel free to call me or uh, Miss Robinson or uh, probably your home class teachers. If there's anything you need, some information about, please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, sign off, and then we give you a copy of this to keep because it's obviously a contractual type arrangement required by the Queensland uh, Government. Uh, so if we need to make any changes in your set plan, we can do it at any time, we just need to record, do a review and record that and sign it off. Okay, and then we keep a record and you get another record. Just quickly show you the subject selection sheet and then we can start So this will give you an idea of the courses. What we've tried, obviously in maths, English, straightforward, you've got English or 
communication English, so you choose either that. The um, I've forgotten what it's called now. Hash sign obviously indicates the uh, SAS subject. So that don't, does not count towards your OP. So if you're after OP or a university pathway, okay, you would probably go with English or Mass A and or Mass B, depending on what your requirements are for your course. If you're interested in following TAFE or a um, business, uh, sorry, a um, Apprenticeship or traineeship, and you may not need that mass, okay, or the high end English, you can do the communication. So, uh, a lot of students, uh, I think just about most students last year chose English. There's probably only one student who's doing econ at the moment in year 12 next year. So, that just gives you an idea of uh, your choices. Pre voc mass is obviously sort of pre work, it's sort of finance mass, that type of thing. Okay, so these lines we've put together here, uh, the idea is to choose one subject from each line. However, if there is a subject that is not uh, matching up or you wish to do, you, sim oh, sorry. you simply um, go through and circle these here and you may find there might be two subjects that you want to do in the one line. All you need to do is write that subject down here. Okay, so. We've tried to take from last year and historically what most students have taken to try and get that in place so that um, we've tried to make it a little straight, more straightforward rather than giving you a full selection of every subject and then try and match it up. We've tried to put it into lines to start off with. Um, so please go through each of those lines, um, choose subjects you're interested in or matches your, um, uh, your requirements. Then, if there's one special one that you're not that's missing out or two, just write them down here so we can look at that when we come to doing subject selection. Also, there is a recreational studies and hospitality practices SAS. It's in your um, um, course handbook details, and there's also a sheet on home economics, which is an OP subject. So that's uh, been added. So there, they are there. Um, Miss Park is going to come and speak to the Year 10s, I believe, early this week, and Mr Anderson will be following up with recreation. So these SAS courses are non-OP, but there may be students interested in doing those. For example, if you do hospitality practices, you may have the opportunity to do the Cert 2 in hospitality. TAA, which I had said with industrial technology, will do those certificate courses. They, may, uh, they will also be able to desert to hospitality if we get enough students interested. New um, subjects there are dance, sorry, which is in line three, because so, I know some students are very keen on that, so obviously uh, it's one that's there. Home ec is another new subject. Um, so essentially, you just hopefully we've be able to choose one subject from each line. Okay, is there any questions about subject selection or set plans so far? Or anything that you'd like to ask? Please, if at the end of the uh, this session, if you want to see uh, others, that's fine. Any questions? It's a lot of information I'm throwing at you, I know, and um, it's a matter of now probably sitting down and going through and sitting down with your students and just going through it. Let me just check I haven't forgotten anything. Okay. No questions about that at all? If you have, please see me. Um, so the next steps, once you've had a chance to digest all that's there, I think a lot of students I've spoken to in Year 10 already have a reasonable understanding of what they would like to do. Now they just need to do a bit of research. Um, but essentially aim to fill out as best as possible these two forms. Then book an interview time. So we'll have an interview time. It's a 30 minute time. It's a uh, number of uh, <coughs> teachers will be uh, able to take those interviews so you can select a teacher and a time from, it'll be 3.30 to 6.30. So hopefully that'll be able to cover people who have to work 
So it's the students should come in with the parents so we can have a good chat about things uh, and they'll be in the library. They'll be same processes for teacher parent interviews through Parent Lounge. I'll email out a, a, an email just to go through those details so you just follow the same directions essentially for Parent Lounge and they'll be available from Monday. So it'll be Monday and Wednesday night. Some teachers have put in for Thursday night as well. So 3.30 to 6.30, half hour slots, and week three to five. So I'm hoping that will give everyone a good opportunity to um, come in and see us. Uh, borders, don't think there's any borders here, or parent, border parents, but we will do phone interviews, um, and um, Miss Burgess and Miss Bowes are chasing up international and indigenous students and doing theirs with their parents by phone. So um, we work through with all the parents. Uh, so that's just finally, I've probably gone through things, except I haven't changed green to peach or orange. Um, so it's really important to, it says fully completed, but if you get stuck, just bring in, you know, most people should be able to get down to the courses. So if there's some discussion you want to have about the courses, but what you like and dislike, you should be able to do the first couple of pages. And I think I've gone through that. Okay, I know that's a lot of information, but has anyone got any questions, general questions? I think the most important thing is the careers website, careers newsletter, trying to get to any open days, uh, TAFE open days. I know I've taken a number of you in this room out to, we went to the TAFE open day. Anything else I can help you with? Okay, everyone okay? Anyway, you can see us at the end. Anyway, thank you very much for coming. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, Christian studies is compulsory. Okay, any other questions? Okay, yes. Yes, it's, in the, it's actually in the handbook, in this here, in the back of this. You're all listed on the subject area specifications at the back of the book. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's it. I'll let, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate Yes, yeah, sorry. All right. See you later. Sorry, Mike, I just have to leave it on. I've got a call from Ricky. Um, oh, okay. So you okay? Yeah, I think everything's okay. I'm going to put this back together for Benny Elvis, I think. Well, no problems at all. I pulled this. I couldn't bring mine over. I couldn't bring mine over, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll just have to leave it on. Yeah, I'll just have to leave it on. So, do they end up with seven subjects? Okay.